First of all, how many out there are uh, um, involved in musculoskeletal medicine? Okay. How many surgeons? Good to see you. Primary care sports? Rheumatology? Glad you made it. <laughs> all right. I want to first echo what was last said here. This is an early field. It's a young field. And as much as all of us want the double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized, multi-center trials to say you need to do this exactly as many times as far apart with this stuff on this type of patient to get this result in this amount of time with this, this kind of rehab, doesn't exist, guys. But that's what you're all here for. We're all here to get together and start doing that together. Um, shoulder in our, in our clinic was one of the last things that we started doing. We've done much more with knee and hip. Uh, so instead of spending all of my time just presenting our results on shoulder, I want to spend some time talking about how do you approach regenerative medicine and go through some results, but then talk about some of the future directions and some of the things we're going to be working on. Okay. You guys can read through that. You guys know about mesenchymal stem cells. That was gone over by Dr. Watson this morning. Pretty much every tissue has MSCs in it. These are extensively studied. Let's talk about the bottom of that pyramid for just a second. Over 14,000 index studies on mesenchymal stem cells. Stop and think about that for a second. Those travel back over 35 years. It's more known about these cells than any other cells, uh, probably. Um, three times more so, uh, studies from bench research all the way up through animal research and human studies as well. Um, uh, three times more than the top three orthopedic procedures that are currently performed. There's a lot known about what we're doing. We're not starting at the top of the top that Dr. Watson was talking about. Um, safety studies, we'll go over that specifically with some of our data. But uh, suffice it to say, there's one paper that I know of in the entirety of those 14,000 that would suggest that there's anything intrinsic within mesenchymal stem cells that would lead to potential disease. Are the possibilities out there? Yes. Are they seem to be panning out? Not from what I see in the literature. Um, uh, that autologous versus allogeneic versus induced, induced pluripotent versus embryonic, these are, these are arguments that are going to go on for the next 25 years. I hope that all of our conferences don't get marred down in those because uh, early afternoon haze or not, you guys are all going to be sleeping if we do that every year. Um, we're going to talk about some of the efficacy that we're uh, finding in our study so far. Just a little bit about our clinic. We've been doing therapeutic stem cell therapies for over six years. We're the first clinic in the United States to focus on orthopedic uh, stem cell therapies. Uh, most of that first, especially the first five years, was is this stuff safe and does it work? So we're getting to the point of being able to mine some of that data and talk about does it work? Um, safety, we also have probably the deepest and broadest safety studies that exist out there. I'll save some of that information for Dr. Schultz to talk to you about. Uh, we have two level three labs that are um, controlled and operated by us with five full-time cell biologists doing bench research. Uh, are they doing 24-7 now? Yeah, pretty much. A <laughs> um, uh, very active research program at the level of the bench, at the level of how do you concentrate, how do you identify, and how do you put together these solutions how do they work in combination with each other? A lot of unpublished data that's built upon what we've done already. Um, we have, uh, I think at last count, four different countries and three or four different states now where there are physicians that are currently working with us and building uh, more of the bottom of that pyramid as we work towards the top of that pyramid. Um, we're an ICMS accredited clinic, which, by the way, those, uh, those ISCAR uh, three points that Dr. Watson was pointing out were, were invented by and the only organization in the world that's actually checking our clinics implementing these things. Are they using them and are they using them correctly? That's done by ICMS. Blank slide. <laughs> All right. I want to spend a moderate amount of time talking about this. You could, uh, each one of those little bubbles could easily be its own talk. Uh, but let's start at the top. Um, advanced re regenerative agents, as I said, we have full-time cell biologists working on how do, you, how do you 
separate out platelets. How do you know platelets is, eff is efficacious? How do you know if it's better, if it's open, or if it's or everything's been spilled out of it? Um, uh, as we get to those ages of senescence where you don't have as many growth factors, is it number, is it concentration, is it quality, is it quantity? We, these are things that we're, that we're currently working on in our labs with uh, sometimes surprising data and sometimes uh, what you exactly would expect. Uh, the clinical and laboratory research is ongoing. Um, I think we're up around 3,000 stem cell procedures in the last six years on patients. Uh, all that data um, needs to be mined and give it to you to help, to help you understand what you need to do in your next steps. Um, as I talked about ICMS, international cooperation and standards, um, we want to be above the bar in everything that we're doing. We need to be. The eyes, uh, eyes are very, very closely watching all of us. And one screw up is 10 years of, uh, I told you that was a bad idea to do from everybody else. We don't want that. We're looking forward to always staying above the bar, always reporting everything that is a potential complication to everything that's a positive. I like talking about the positive better, but uh, patient optimization, we've spent a great deal of time on. I can say we probably have more data than anybody else on what medications, um, how far apart do you do your, um, what medications are detrimental to a patient's results, what kind of uh, supplements are helpful. Uh, a lot of studies that we're doing ongoing with that. We're, we're very, very big pro uh, proponents of injection guidance. Um, currently, we, all, we use uh, musculoskeletal ultrasound and fluoroscopy in our clinic, uh, and we're treating every musculoskeletal condition that uh, uh, you can think of right now. Uh, we're currently developing a third form of, of guidance with a company in Colorado uh, to be able to better see and better implement what advanced regenerative agents we have. But needless to say, um, if this is something that you're getting into, I'd highly suggest that you get into injection guidance. Uh, the guys that are more accomplished than me in ultrasound that are in the audience will know this too. Uh, whether or not you get a needle inside of a tissue, half the time isn't even the question. Half the time it's, how did you work that tissue? How much did you put into each, around each macro bundle of collagen? Did you, uh, did you uh, barbitage the surface of the tissue uh, at the insertion of a tendon correctly? Uh, all those things are, are the subject of their own talks in and of themselves. But be trained broad and wide, broad, wide, and deep in your ability to put an injection where it needs to, how it needs to be there.